So, am I moving my first thing to the that one here? Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to t I'm going to talk a bit about what stuttering taught me about running a business. Um, first, a bit about me. My name is Lisa Perone, and I'm the co-founder and chief branding officer of Outspoken Media. We are an internet marketing company located here in. In Troy. Um, I founded the company in 2009 with my partner, Ria Drysdale, who's hiding over, over there. Um, and if you remember anything about the state of the economy in 2009, and a nine, you remember that it wasn't really the best time to start a, to start a sandwich, let alone a business. But, but, but that's what happened. Um, in 2009, I had just moved from, uh, from LA to New York. And so I th found myself in a really difficult position when three months into the job, I had just moved here to take, I felt like things weren't working out. So I had the, so I had a choice. I could stay at the job and keep my paycheck, but risk my integrity, or I could quit. So in, a, in the middle of a crap economy and with absolutely nothing to fall back on, I quit my job. If, if any of you have, if any of you have, have ever started a business or you've ever even thought about it, you know it. You know it feels. A, you know it. Oh, what did I do? I hit the wrong button. You know it feels a, a bit <laughs> like that. It's it's terrifying, and it, you know, at 27 and with a degree in journalism, I was. Terrified. I had doubts and I had fears, and I had and I had all these questions that there was no way I was going to have the answers to. But what I realized is that the cool thing about new challenges is that is that they force you to pull off what you already know. You sort of go into you sort of go into in survivor mode and pull. And pull from your bag of n n tricks. And w what I was about to find out was that everything I need, everything I needed to, to know about starting starting a business and creating a brand, I knew bec I knew because I st stuttered. As you know by now, I stutter. Um, what you may not know is just how how rare that is. Just one, just one per, just one percent of the adult pop of the adult population worldwide st stutters. I, Eighty percent of that number are men. That means standing up here, I am as close to as you'll ever see to, to a real life unicorn. Um, for th for those for those who. For those who may, for those who may not be aware, and stuttering is the thought to, is thought to be a, a, a motor skill issue. And stutters display a higher activity in the in the area of the brain that controls speech movements, which makes it difficult for the brain to account for the for the necessary movements. The result is this: it's disfluent in speech. The fact that I stutter has has impacted my life in a number of ways. I was not teased, I was not tormented, but I did grow up quieter than I should. When you have a speech issue, you're not as likely to ask questions. You're not as likely to challenge things. And it's a lot, it's a lot easier to allow someone to make assumptions for you than to speak up and to correct them. And that was 
our life for a long time. And it was my life until I, until I found in social media. In 2006, I got both my voice and my groove back when I ex when I ex had a job as a technical writer for an SEO company in, in LA. Part of that job had me blogging every day. So every every day I was now communicating with people in a way that in a way that I felt uncomfortable talking to them. I was educating them. I was sharing insight. I was making them I was making them laugh and I was telling stories and I was finally connecting with people again. And I also started to get a lot of praise for what I was doing. People saw that I had that I had an ability to talk to to small business owners in a way that they related to. I was able to talk to I was able to talk to brands and to businesses about the power of voice and why they should for it. And it became really clear to me why that was. Like a business, I, I was fearful of standing out or, or of attracting too much attention to myself. Oops, just kidding. I hid behind a mask because I was afraid of people to see me. I was, I was limiting my own voice because I wasn't sure if, if I even deserved to have one. Um, and, and, and I think that, and I think that, I think that was a really powerful thing for me because it allowed me to, it allowed me to see my stuttering as something that worked for me instead of something that worked against me. You know, I understand the power of voice better than anyone because I've had fight for mine. My struggles with voice allow me to better relate to others. I only have to meet someone once before, before they remember me. And that's huge. And it's, as, and it's, as, it's especially huge in business when, when, we're all, when we're all fighting for that mind share. My stuttering makes me memorable. And because I'm memorable, I have a platform. And that's what stuttering taught me. And stuttering taught me how to run a business because stuttering taught me how to embrace weird and how to make weird work. And that's what people need to do. Whether you're a business owner or you're an employee, we're all hiding for that. We're all hiding for that top mind. It wasn't always that way. Before the internet, businesses made their money by catering to the mainstream. They didn't have to worry about the outliers because we were, we were, all, we were all held hostage by this idea of proximity, right? We could we could only buy the products that were in, that were in, 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 in our store. We could only do services with the businesses in our in our in our area. The internet changed this. Now we we could do businesses. We could do business with a, a, anyone, and we could connect with a, anyone. And that changed everything. Now the internet has given weird people a place to meet other weird people and people who are weird in this in this same in the same way in the same way that they are and when they meet them they form in groups we form we form facebook groups we form we form blogs we start podcasts and when we form these groups it then allows marketers to come in and market to them, and now it pays to be weird. It pays to be different because, because that's how because that's how we find not only customers, but it's how we find 
people who are going to be obsessed, who are going to be who are going to be obsessed with their brand and and who are going to love it and who are going to talk about it. Weird is how you stand out. It's how it's how you become memorable and it's how you create a platform. All of us all of us all of a sudden where does new where does where does the normal because where does unprofitable? <laughs> How can you make this work? Are you okay? Let's just accept the fact that you're weird. <laughs> it's fine. Really, it's fine. We're also living in this world where you know, like, we're back in high school. Like, we want to fit in and we want look alike. It's doing you more damage. And good. Just go with it. Step two. Pinpoint what makes you weird. I personally believe that deep down, everyone knows why they're weird, right? <laughs> I'm weird because I stutter. I'm weird because I, because I collect knee socks. Like we <laughs> we all have these things. Just, just admit them. If you want to pretend that you don't know why you're Weird, then fine. Um, <laughs> what, what is it you do when no one's watching you? What is that thing that you hold back when you when you first when you first meet someone? We all have it. Your weirdness can be rooted in ex, in an experience. It can be a character trait. It can be a, physical trait, it can be a strange passion, uh, you know, it could be that you're an extreme I I I introvert, that you're extreme extrovert, whatever it is. Step three, find a way to use it. There's a difference between being weird and being weird in a way that helps you relate to other people. There's a, there's a way to be weird and marketable. That's what you need to find. How can you make what's weird about you work for your customers? How can you make it relevant? When I talk to brands about how to, you know, increase their voice or how to better connect with people, I talk to them about creating their blogging superhero. You know, your blogging superhero is a heightened version of you. It takes your most marketable traits and emphasizes them while de while de-emphasizing the things that really have no use to your customers. We need to stop giving weird and negative connotation because the the success of your of your business rests on your ability to to be weird and to stand out and i'll use us as an example in 2000, in 2009 when we when we started outspoken we, we were entering a we were entering a very very crowded niche we knew that we needed something to, to help us get the early buzz. And while there are lots of things that are strange about me and my partner, um, well, one of the most obvious things were that we were two young women starting an, S starting an SEO company. And that's rare, so we used it. You know, we reached out to other, to other female entrepreneurs knowing that that women like to a women like to do business with other women we we spoke publicly about the image of women in the industry and how we wanted to change that and it worked you know our brand was being talked about in the Wall Street journal it was being talked about in business week it was being talked about in in ink and in the New York Times these are big brands that are now sharing our brand with their audience.
Who else is weird? Both Jersey Jork is. And it doesn't matter, you know, like if you think they're all deplorable <laughs> humans because, because they are, but they've made it work. And Snooky is a best telling author. She, she can barely stand up without falling down. And she's a best selling author. And the situation has made, has made more than five million in appearances. And Jenny has a book and a bronzer. You know, <laughs> Ronnie does product endorsements. Tammy has a perfume, those who it's of clothing lines. It's ridiculous. But, you know, they've, they've built platforms for being odd. Here's my big finish. So I wanted to leave you with a powerful quote from someone that you respect. So here's what I came up with. Holly Parton said, you need to figure out who you are and then do it on purpose. And for me, that's the core of it, right? I mean, we're all weird. Just be weird and you'll find your audience. Thank you. Woo!